about that. Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started. I'd like to welcome you to the April 27th, 26th meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we will ask each applicant to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you're proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. The commissioners may voice an opinion or a suggestion based on their own opinions and feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathershield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, and buildings. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be necessary before you begin your construction. With this, I will ask our clerk of Commissioner Lyons to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April 26, 2022, at 7.30 p.m. at the Weathersfield Town Hall, 505 South St. Highway, Weathersfield, Connecticut, conference room number three, on the following application seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 7051-22, Paul and Joanne Adamo, seeking to replace windows in home with Marvin Essential double hung windows at 38 Center Street. Application 7052-22, Brendan Quinn, seeking to construct a 16 by 12 foot deck on rear home using pressure treated lumber and Trek transcend decking in Havana gold color and railings to match at 14 Willard Street. Application 7053-22, held cabinetry and millwork LLC, seeking to rebuild north side porch with AZEC porch flooring and steps in oyster color, permacast columns, milled spindles and railings to match existing front porch details at 349 Main Street. Application 7054-22, renewal by Anderson, seeking to replace eight double hung windows on rear home with renewal by Anderson, Anderson, six over one, simulated divided light windows with no spacers at 15 foot path length. Application 705-55-22, John and Sandra Zazowski, seeking to remove one double hung window on the first floor north side, install Anderson 400 series windows to existing back porch, also install casement window and patio door on rear of home at 15 Robinswood Drive. Application 7056-22, Matt Kaczynski, seeking to install a four-foot-high black aluminum fence in rear yard at 29 Woodland Street. On the Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Tim Wolf, duly authorized, dated in Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 11th day of April, 2022. Thank you very much. Um, tonight, the four members that are present will be in the room will be voting, and also Chris Hall, our alternate, who is available remotely on the screen. So we'll start with application 7036-22. Mr. Guerrero, welcome back. For the record, uh, my name is Tony Guerrero, 194 Capital Drive, Washington, Connecticut. I just presented this to you before the last meeting. There's objections made and through many conversations, I will say, over the last week and a half. I don't know your table, but I will say that I just go with some of the suggestions that talked about one was the front door um, was on a plan shows uh, windows there on the side but we went with a solid so there's no more windows to the left or to the right of the front door so these these fronts here are not active so even right? so the front door is not that's right. so 
So let's make just let's just make document that. Yes. So the door has raised panels, and then are there three lights at the top of the door? Yes. And then on either side there are no lights, and there are lights above. Yes. Lights above. Yes. With one hanging. One, yes. two, three, four, five, no, six. Not lights. Transom. Transom. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Six. Six. Right. Thank you. Six transoms, but not on either side. Yes. Thank you. Six transoms. Four. One, two, four, three, four, four, four five. My picture shows six. Yeah, we have a side side windows. Right. For the record, I just sent um, Chris Hall from Turbo. I just uh, texted him the new pictures that you brought tonight. I have. I brought them up on. Oh, you did. Okay. We are fully great technologically. Yeah. And also, just just to go a couple things. You, there were some comments made about you know, windows. If you look at the house to the left or the porch or so called additions that are made there, we did decide to go with the recommendation of the casement windows instead of the recommended. And then also, I think this, uh, this gentleman from the West Essex mentioned about the siding that we were going with the rough, but he said that maybe it holds a lot of dirt. Or, so we may look at maybe changing that with the school. So actually, you just want to like give your classes also. Yeah. It's a cement wall. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yes. Okay. Um, one of the things I did do, so I did, um, so the purpose of the kitchen was to make sure all the kitchen was clean. But one of the other things that you were talking about last page was the site. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to show an elevation. So, what we did is we have a model uh, of St. Columbus looking at the houses. So, the same columns, uh, but the different foot at an eight foot space uh, and at a height of about 99 feet. Your fish will match. The reason I wanted to get this is there was a concern about what the use of the road. Um, so we also did a request had renders prepared for the wall. So on the screen, um, what you can see is you asked for a rendering basically at the driveway and stand on the sidewalk. So this is actually how the road looking at it down the driveway. Um, but you can see the garage in the background, the attached garage um, on the driveway, which you can see the walkway. Okay, don't continue. Um, the other purpose was to represent. Side rather than going across the, the whole property, the original property line. Uh, we try to keep it open so you can see the appearance of the house. Um, as mentioned, we're going to go metal roof, the whole metal roof, on the porch only. Uh, it's also a document to show on the sweater. When you mentioned nine feet, you're talking about this. To the bottom of the beam. When the beam is so firm, you're going to soften down. So uh, this is a, another render that uh, basically is taken from across the street, a uh, little further down the road. Uh, so in the very back, you see just the appearance of the walkway in the back of that garage. Um, there are some sweeping of the trees along the street, side top the line, but the street is all back over the top. So it feels like it's very good. And what I also did. This rendering there, it was very difficult because you couldn't really see it when we took pictures from the sidewalk. So basically, we, I had the, the photographer do a rendering of trying to get a side view for all of you to see what it made, what it made look like. But that's not a true representation of what you really see because the lot is narrow, so you don't really see going all the way down. But we were able to like make the illusion look a little bit better so you can see what it made look like. If you walk down the driveway. I'm going to pass back to you, Poppy. Is that everything you're submitting for tonight? That's new? Okay. And the only thing is 
I have I have uh, put the date on each one. If it's just signed next to the date so that I can add it to the application. I don't need that with your signature. So, Jen? Chris, you were going to say something? Yeah, I, I kind of heard it from a distance. Was the porch altered? I'm sorry if I have to have you repeat a little bit. Was there a new plan for the front of the house having less porch? Is that what I heard? No, the porch has not changed. So it's as the rendering that I see, it matches the rendering I see? Correct. Okay. last meeting about the stainless steel metal roof. You said it was going to be uh, folded at the ridges. Yes. Which is not what you're showing here. I just, that's for the color. Okay. Because I remember I told you it was black and you said that was green. Okay, so that's why I wasn't cut down. So if it's black, I'm just saying, how did that fold? You're 
Excuse me. Yes. Are there uh, plans, or do, or do there have to be plans for the front steps railings, if there are going to be any? No railings, Chris. No railings, Chris. Okay, that makes it easier. Questions for this applicant? Did we cover everything you brought in? we're seeing of whatever changes you've made to the application from last week. So walk us through it. Absolutely. Um, I took all of the comments, um, positive and negative, and I tried to do my best to address all the concerns that the commission had as well as the community. Um, starting with uh, the removal of the five foot off of the or five feet off of the front elevation bump out, I decided to put that back into the plan 
Um, I was asking for permission to remove it from the very beginning, um, but because we reduced the, the building itself, we needed that square footage back. I don't know if you can see that. If you go to page two, you'll see that that's put back in. Um, the legal notice stated that there was a 71 foot, four inch by 34 uh, foot, five inch addition. Um, the addition is actually 53 feet, two inches by 31 feet, three inches at its widest point. The, uh, many of the neighbors stopped by and commented that the proposed addition wasn't as big as it appeared on paper. And I believe the confusion was that we were rebuilding the middle portion of the existing building. So they added that back in when really um, the addition itself is after that portion. If you go to the site plan page, you can see that I shaded that in in a pink color. Just to give so it's a point to back yeah. you up. You said early on that you repeat what you said in the first part of, of, of talking that you had it originally not included in and now you included it. I, oh, I I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So originally that on this first page here, um, here's five feet of this front bump out that I was requesting to be removed. But because we reduced the building um, on this new plan, we want it back in. So, so you're just leaving we're leaving it. it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. So there's no change on that part. Um, okay, all the materials will remain the same as presented before except for the addition of the radiance rail by timber tech for the basement egress along the very rear of the north side if you go to page where it has all of the main street views you'll see at the very end behind the trees you'll see there's like a little shaded uh, fence line yep the one that you're it's this one right here with all the views. Okay. The very rear on the north side, there is um, a fence line. You can also go to um, the page where all the dimensions are on that north side, and you'll see it there as well. This page right here. It's right here. And because we had to change the building a little bit, we needed to um, to move that. So that's another change. Um, the commission approved this exact railing at our house next door. Um, and then I included the spec sheet for that um, in your packet as well. Uh, let's see here. We also are going to be carrying um, the existing pavers um, there are these pavers right here. This is a little wet. I apologize. Um, in Westchester, it's a Nicolette product, and it's currently there on the walkways. Um, we are just going to carry it through. So the, the entire driveway itself is asphalt, going all the way back to the very rear of the proposed addition. And we just plan on picking up that asphalt and putting these pavers down in their in place. So this plan. You got it. Um, let's see. That's it for material um, additions. So there was just the radiance rail and then the pavers. Um, massing was a huge topic. So I went back to the drawing board and significantly lowered the roof line so that from the north it will appear as a single floor elevation or single story elevation rather with dormers. From the front of the addition, it'll be um, a lot more subservient to the original structure. So um, because we're keeping the full length of that bump out from the front, you're really not going to see as much of the addition because you're adding back that five feet and doing some floor. We also are um, continuing to carry that slate roof all the way across. So the bump out not only is back to its original size, but has a second floor on it too. Correct. It had a second floor before in the original um, for, uh, proposal. The only difference is that we're carrying that extra five feet that's originally there and just adding that upstairs as well. So the length of the addition itself is not changing. Um, it was missed, mis uh, but it's a big, it's the thing. So right. The, the, the numbers were written down wrong somewhere, but the actual
actual length of the plan that we saw before and the stake out is actually the same length? No, it's shaved down by approximately two feet, I believe, and then it also changed in um, the width. So we had we had, had a 34 inch width, but at its widest point, we're at 31. And that includes a five um, to seven foot setback on the north south, uh, the north side. So it was 34 feet wide and now it's 31 and it's about two feet shorter. Correct. And it's a, a little bit. It's significantly less. It's shorter. Lower. Yes. The roof line is lower. And yeah. when you say it's lower, how many feet lower is it? Um, well, if you look at the page, it says the existing roof peak is 26. And we are going to the rear roof peak. I can read the rear roof peak, but I can't read the numbers. Sorry, okay. it's 20. It's 60. From the existing roof. Yep. Mm -hmm. Existing is in the front of the house. Correct. It goes uh, correct. Yep, it goes twenty six to oh got it. Okay. Um let's see. Uh, we met with the owners of the Robin Sisters um, house and we walked through the new plan, discussed the setback, and um, I explained that we were going to give a uh, a reasonable amount of um, walkway for maintenance and for egress, a basement egress. So at um, at its shortest uh, length, it's two feet, nine inches, and then it goes all the way to approximately eight feet from the trees. Um, so when you say at its shortest length, what is? So there's, what is, what, what are you talking about? What's the this? If you go to this page, it'll definitely help. Thank you. There's a lot of jobs in the building, so um, at this shortest um, setback is two feet nine inches. So you're talking about the setback. Now. Correct. Thank you. Yep. And then at its widest point, it will be um, just under eight feet. So that's all. You're sticking to that. You should be at your two bump house. Is that the 31 feet, or is that wider than the bottom? This bump? right here. This right here. Well, not that. No, drop down one, go down to the bottom of the page. That's where you have your looks like a little square bump out. Is that the 31 feet or is that wide or something? Correct. That is the 31 so feet. That's the wide, but actually, and what is that job there? Two to three feet? So if you go to this page right here with the north elevation is, um, so the new addition, you'll see that it is 31 feet three inches at its widest point of the addition itself. So not talking about the existing building, but just the, the. Yeah, yeah the existing is going to be wider. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. We also, uh, so the reason why we did that setback obviously was to respect the, the request of the, um, the owners of the Robin Sisters house, but also we, I didn't take into consideration um, the maintenance side of things, and I need to be able to maintain that side of the property. So we did that as well. We also met with planning and zoning on the setback, in which they confirmed we are in line with zoning regulations for the village business district, provided we are granted a waiver and special permit. So um, we did our, our footwork on that as well. Now these pavers, are they going to be for parking or are they just for walking or so they're just for walking so if you go back to this this is kind of my bible um you'll see that the, the the driveway is only parkable for two cars there's a removable um, wheel stop and then uh the rest of it is currently asphalt we're going to just pick up that asphalt and put the pavers in place and the reason why we have to have that movable wheel stop is so if the fire truck needed to get through they um had the access That too. <laughs> um, the parking lot was a huge um, concern. So we went back to the drawing board with that as well. And um, I addressed this as best as I could with the shape of the land itself, because we still have to be able to get in and out. Um, with that being said, I researched a reinforced grass as an option. And my engineer just recently did this at a church.
research and it worked out great. I let planning and zoning know that this was something that I would be proposing and they said that that was going to be fine to address at their meeting. Um, it is adding back approximately 2,000 square feet of green space um, and that's not including the four foot bed that we're also proposing. So altogether it's 13 feet um, in width by 236 feet in length. Grass. Yep. Yeah. So um, underneath the grass, there is a grid system that interlocks and it gets uh, filled up with like a crushed stone. Approximately, I'm not sure on all the layers, but um, Ozzy's done it before. And then the grass grows on top. So you, there's nothing above the grass that you see. It's literally just grass. So you, you have a fence on the Robinson side and then you are proposing arbor bias. So the fence, um, the, the the owners of the Robin Sisters have requested not to put a fence there. I'm sorry, I may have said it wrong. Oh. The Robin's Court. Robin's Court. Court. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, so there is already a fence there. Yep. So you don't have a fence there. Yep, and then we're proposing to plant um, 10, I believe it's 10 or 11 uh, flowering uh, pear trees. And we went to uh, the greenhouse and, or the, the distribution center for that and they said that they grow to approximately 20 feet uh 25 feet tall and they have pretty wide umbrellas that's if they make it so, and then the pears in front and they're beautiful this time of year but they, they're so dense you, you get a ton of ice sheer in the winter and, so we have had you look in the highway yeah we have, two, have yeah we have good ones in front of our salon we maintain them um a lot of trimming. The Chanticleer species is a hell of a lot like stronger than some of the other species, so that's why we're picking the Chanticleers um, over the other species because they're known to be structurally sound. <laughs> right. the, the pears have become mostly your favorite species, so, but I'm not that. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Most I know, they, yeah, they don't make it. Uh, <laughs> they actually, they're, they're so too sterile and they're not, and they, they like to drive up to, to Bradley Airport. There's a whole off and they're taking up the landscape. And, but anyhow, not, <laughs> I said I wasn't, but I was. That's okay. That's uh, okay. You're, you're free. You're going to have arbor body in the front. Yes, so arbor body will be the buffer uh, from the one, two, three, four, five, uh, roughly five spaces that you'll actually see um, from Main Street. The rest are hidden behind uh, the 160 house and the addition itself. So tell us about the wide use of parking. Absolutely. Um, so I did a lot of research and I know that no one likes the, the tall parking lot posts. I found a gorgeous Ballard, um, or Ballard rather, there's approximately five on the plan. Um, and you'll see that I put it in there. It's approximately 42 inches in height. Um, so it's, it's below the fence line, the fence is six feet, so this is significantly below. It is dark sky compliant. Um, and I chose a warm white output as well as a photo cell option. And the photo cell option allows it to, um, to go on at dusk and turn off automatically at dawn. Um, and I have chosen the option to have the light directed towards the parking lot only and not um, towards the fence line. And that finish would be in black. Um, the other thing that I had to mention or have to mention is uh, in terms of the landscaping, we are proposing to plant a hydrangea bed along the north side of the property. It would carry into the uh, property owned by the Robin sisters. Uh, they have given us permission to um, carry that bed as long as we maintain it and pay for it ourselves. And this will be along. The north side of the, the north side. Uh, just the visible part until it, their arbor body starts. Okay. Yep. So what the basically the footprint of the building that this is now has nothing to do with the addition. Okay. Any questions asked while having dumpsters? Yes. So um, the dumpster, I don't have a dumpster on uh, this property and I don't intend to. Um, I'm putting the dumpster uh, in the 146 parking lot. Uh, it's going to be either on the corner shown in the site plan picture or in the other corner um, unless it's yep, next to Ascot's dumpster. And it would be screened with arborvitaes as 
they all are. Um, the chimney was brought up a little bit, but I just wanted to touch on that. Uh, the chimney would be uh, removed and then rebuilt with the brick veneer um, to match. And we did the same thing when we did our salon project at 146 Main Street. And um, they're almost, you can't tell the difference. So we would be planning, we, we would be building exactly a dimension for dimension. A couple other design elements that I just wanted to point out that are slightly different from the original is if you go to this page right here, you'll see that I removed the, the um, posts. And I actually didn't think about uh, when I first designed this, the posts should not be on um, the, the ground because of the, the material that they are, they would rot very easily. So instead I opted for an enclosed entryway um, with the matching seat as in the rest of the There's a question about that too. Uh, that view shows all the doors basically flush with the sidewalk. Is there any stack up? No, it's all on the ground. Yep, it has to be for ADA accessibility. All the doors are 36 inches, same height, you know, like typical. Um, standard door. I wonder if I can ask something. Of course. Uh, I'm just curious about um, where there's space allocated or, or somewhere in this, the design for the HVAC. And uh, also not knowing what kind of businesses are going to be in there if, if like a um, a business that goes in and needs a, a kitchen are they then going to need exhaust fans and if so where would they be put like I'm just curious about those absolutely that's a fair question um, much like we have our uh, condensers um, in the rear of the building at the salon we would be doing the same thing and then anything that would require screening would get appropriate screening so, so it wouldn't be anything mounted on, on the roof, so to speak. It would be... No, no, no. no, no. It would be on the, on the ground. Uh, two connectors, three. Whatever Switch they... Connectors. I want to say that we have two at the salon, so I would assume we would need three based off of the square footage. You know if there are many splits you're using? Um, I don't anticipate like using any splits, and if I do, the only one would be if I am allowed to do a, an apartment above the rear. Um, because we had to lower the roof line, this is kind of an inconvenient space for commercial. So I may uh, make this a um, just a single like a studio apartment, um, and that would be possibly a split unit because it's only about 300 or, or so square feet. You'd have to come back for that. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I want to go back to. Yep, of course. Um, and you. So you're eliminating the spaces along the um, fence line, all the parking lot spaces along the fence line, which gains you nine feet. And what's the distance between, you said a 12, 12 feet total? So each space is 22 feet long by nine feet wide. And then we're also going to have a four foot bed. So you're gonna have 13 feet. Of and the four foot bed is between the fence and the okay. green space. Okay. Yep. And then in that, you'll see those tiny little circles. There's three tiny little circles. Those are the light fixtures. I don't know where you're referring to. Okay, that can be shown. Yep. So you'll see that as we have. Oh, I see. Okay, I got yep. it. Thank you. No problem. And then there are, there's one in this corner right here, and then there's one in this corner, and that is substantial lighting for the, um, for the parking lot. Okay. As you know, I'm not a fan of the parking lot at all. I in between the two rows of houses. Um, and so all the efforts to make it visible are helping. Um, how about Arborvitae's, the row you have in front of your vacant lot, 
but how about to the looking at this piece of paper to the right of the shed until you get to the walkway area there's more green area could you are providing that as well so you're shading another three spots or so shielding another three spots or so are you specifying behind the shed no nope. to the right of the shed I have a fence in the house. There's, there's oh, it's behind the house. Yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that you would see is um, okay. I got that it. Corner. Yes. That makes sense. And I will say that um, I went to planning and zoning and just asked them if I didn't do the addition based off of the square footage of the existing building, how many spaces would I need? And I would need all of this anyway because it's five spaces per one thousand. So all of the remaining spaces now on this plan are what you need to comply with their requirements. Correct. Okay. Unless I ask for a special permit, which I could do that, but parking is a, a thing on Main Street. So trying to make both sides happy. <laughs> yeah, no, I see it now. I just was not thinking about that. What um what necessitates not leaving the chimney as is? Um, the, because the floor plan inside is compromised, the, the, the reason why we have to take down that portion of the house is because um, there are significant structural issues with it. Um, the chimney is definitely one of those. Uh, there's if you went inside the house, you would understand it's definitely a a problem. You'll also see that I took out the arborvitaes along the uh, 160 for privacy screening, uh, and instead I'm doing movable seasonal planters. I know it's not a big deal, but it's still a difference from the original. Chris, I don't know if you can do it. Is it? Can I see the those lights that, um, that are being proposed? Is there a drawing you can just turn around and hold up to the camera for me? That's the only thing I'm kind of blind on, even imagining. Okay, thanks. I can send you forty-two inches high. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Just something else I need just a little clarity on the the space that would be needed for a dumpster where the the truck can back in or whatever and is, is that on there? Yes. So um, it would be on it is there's a there's a depiction of it on the plan. Um, the far corner up here, almost where the salon is. So kind of okay. Off. Okay, so all right, that's in there, all right. Not behind the, the 162, 64. Right. Okay. So a truck. Yes, good. Trucks can get in through there, and then there is a, an existing fence um, buffering already the property on the other side. 
you know how much um, grass space is in between your driveway and the academy's parking lot? Your driveway. So your driveway coming in from 146. Yeah. And then the academy lot doesn't go all the way back. There's some green in between the two. You're going to have to take down that big tree, I assume. So the big tree is actually over here. Yep. It doesn't have to do with this. Um, okay, I thought it was. No, I, the I big tree's over. It was, it, the okay. big tree's over here. Yep. Um, what we cleared out is what is oh, good. Okay. is what exactly that is. It okay. doesn't include any of the hydrangeas that we have. Far back. Yep. Oh yeah, it's very far back. Um, and there they also have a pine next to the big tree. Yep. Um, we That's are going. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> okay. so. it's a big pine. Um, but no, we don't have to touch any of that. Um, the don't have to be shown. Chris Hall, any other questions? No, thanks. Okay. Anyone here at the table? More questions? I'm going to hand these back. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank you again for um, coming in with very thorough plans. Greatly appreciate it. Um, generally speaking, we would love to have them in advance because it took a little bit of time for us to get oriented more than anything. Um, but um, we do appreciate the effort that was put in on that. Um, anything else for us tonight? Okay. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Yes, ma'am. Name and address for the record. Any other members of the public wishing to speak in favor against? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Father, owner of the Spirit Girl LC, which is with us this morning uh, to one of the coffee events. Um, so, Mr. Lee, I'm going to have another copy of the packet. We did talk um, last Saturday, and we're still walking the property line. We're actually going to do some identification. It's identical. Yeah.
very much for coming in. Anyone else? Somebody on the phone line has their hand up? Yes, sir. Your name and address for the record, please. Paul Brady, 1618 First Street. I am here in support of the uh, project. I think it's a uh, good for the neighborhood. Uh, over the Alex Rich has always taken the neighbors in consideration. I would say, I know I'm grateful for that, and I'm sure the neighbors are. So, uh, thank you very much. Anyone else in favor or opposed? Hearing none, I've got one letter. It's from Julia Sapia, 136 Main Street. They're sustaining a picture is worth a thousand words. However, not true with Antonio and Larissa's application at 164 to 166 Main Street. The paper presentation overstates the actual size of the project visually. I walked the property and did not find the proposed addition height, width, and depth to be oversized for the property. Furthermore, from a height perspective, the proposed addition when looking out my kitchen window will be dwarfed by the Victorian at 160 Main Street, question mark. If massing is a concern of the commission, why were approvals granted for the addition at Main Street Creamery, a new construction home on Robinswood, and the house renovation on Broad Street? All mentioned properties width and depth could be perceived as massing in comparison to the property size and the surrounding home. Evident in the presentation is a thoughtful design, attention to detail, along with consideration for the immediate surrounding properties. I admire, I admired Larissa's commitment to the renovation and repurposing of their properties and dedication to these properties so they continue to shine. My recommendation is that the application at 164 to 166 Main Street be approved. Signed, Julie Sapia, 136 Main Street. Thank you. And with that, thank you very much. We'll move on to the next application. Thank you again for coming in. We are on application 703H, the application for 255 Middletown Avenue. We're here last week and we talked about persisting glass, which um, probably aren't going to be approved. Uh, so I spoke to my customers and they are willing to do the full divided life. That being said, um, full divided life with spacers, and they have an array of different grid patterns throughout their house, okay? So they have some six over six, and they have some six over one, and a few four over one. So, and some two over six, okay? So that being said, we really wanna get the project approved. We'll do the full divided life um, with the space of our and if you guys want to dictate to us what you want for the grid pattern, um, we would. If you want to protest it, that's fine. Just for one second. Yeah. Would you say full two divided life is recommended by most people as similar to five divided life? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I'm looking at you because you said something about yeah. it last week. Okay. Yes. And which renewal by Anderson product is it? Because there are a variety and we're trying to nail down what the actual product is. I, I'm gonna tell you this because I know there's another renewal lander here. So there's only one window that renewal landers can sell. It's the composite window. Okay. Um they all look the same from the exterior. So in terms of material thickness of the frame. Okay. Um but these are all going to be double hung windows. So and I've done number of projects in my brother's store before we usually get approval because we can replicate the old um, work. So we so perhaps someone could let us know which pattern they would like to go with. We don't actually agree, so it's <laughs> <laughs>
haven't been in my house, so I don't know how badly it's changing the back half of the house is. Um, so once we once we start doing that, we do plan on trying to actually rehab those windows. They're not in as bad condition as the ones at the front, um, where things are not. So I prefer the six over one um, because it gives a little bit more light into the house. Um, I think it might not be as noticeable a difference when you're looking at the, if you can kind of see the side porch a little bit where it's got the four over one. Um, so it would kind of blend a little bit better, I think. Um, I don't know, maybe I can just start looking at it. <laughs> I mean, I would rather the six over six, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I handed um, some paper boxes that I think the commission received, but I'm not sure if Kim shared with you. Did you but yeah. his review? Okay. So you saw the, um, there was a um, survey of the property done by a, a well-known area gentleman. And he, in, in this letter, he was of the opinion that the house probably had 12 over 12 and 12 over eight in the front windows at least originally. We were so there certainly is precedent for something other than what you've got right now. Um, and he feels that they've probably been changed and changed a couple times. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it was it 12 over 12 and is the six over one one and two? It, I, I'm, I'm willing to do anything that makes sure the windows not sort of pass them up. Open the hole and not have air coming through. <laughs> <laughs> not sunlight That's coming through the sides. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, yeah. And it, part, of the, part of the problem is because the house has settled the way that it has, um, some of the windows, the issue isn't really that they're painted. Most of them are painted shut. But some of them, the issue is actually that the um, Frame. I guess frame. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. Um, the frame has shifted, and so they're actually wedged in there. Um, so it's there's a, there's a vast difference from one window to another in terms of what the problem might be. So that's one of the reasons why we're like, okay, I get the inserts will be fine because then they can even them out on the sides and make sure they're level. And, and things we like keep that. the original historic woodwork on the interior. Are they in your backyard? In a pile 
the rear corner of the house. Okay. Can you take some of the sides. It looks like. Well, their hand chisels are not perfect. There's a this depth is like the five width of the top. The same. It's the landing area for the brown stone. So it's kind of just enough picture to see up there now. They're all 40 to 46 inches wide, roughly. And that's the same with the granite, it's also 46 yes. inches wide. Mm -hmm. So as you have them now, that's approximately going to be how, how that there's three in the front of the slide, or three on each door of the four. You know, three steps going up, or how explain what that's going like. Four-ish, and they will be pointed. Well, I say four ish because the dead man's door around the corner there is uh, three because the, the grade is a little bit uneven in the yard, the way the yard is pitched. So, five to six inch risers, they're, they're going to be pointed the same way as my foundation is. My foundation is partially granite and partially brownstone. The house immediately next door, their foundation is entirely granite. And straight in front of my house, the, the warehouse, the entire foundation of the warehouse is granite. Um, the granite is more durable, and it, I think they're more appropriate because they're hand chiseled, reclaimed stones versus the modern saw cut stones uh, that we're calling cut. Well, it's got you here. You have a structure on your property that I believe um, the district commission uh, coordinator has asked you about that houses a vote. Yes, ma'am. Are you going to come in with some application for that item? I am not because it's temporary. It's not temporary. It does longer than 120 days. 180 days? Yes, ma I understand that. Okay. It's set up for years? About, yeah, about two years. Okay, yes. so it's not a temporary structure mm -hmm. under our guidelines. Okay, so it's either coming down or you're coming in with an application. One of those two things is happening. Yes. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for this applicant? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, thank you for coming in. Thanks. Let's move on to application 7051, the application at 38 Center Street, which I understand has been withdrawn. Is that correct? Application 7052, 14 Willard. 14 Willard Street. All right, we will pass 14 Willard. And let's move on to 7053 application for 349 Main Street. Hello, back, Mr. Mayo. Hello. How are you? Very good. Lee and address for the record, please. Lee Hale, Fields Cabinetry at Nolan, 21 Deerfield Road, Burnsfield. Jim Mayo, 59 Main Street. Great, thanks. Tell us about your application. Uh, we're looking to rebuild the north side uh, porch uh, to replicate the details that are existing uh, and to match the details that were already restored on the front porch previously last year. Which came out really spectacular. We really thrilled with that kind of renovation back to the original. Um, it's the small porch that's up above. Or the porch I can't see right now because it's low. Right, right, right. The driveway side. Yeah. It's very difficult for us to see no, that on the side. I mean the, the right side. The, the, right the side. north side, I apologize. So, um, very difficult for us to see in the sight line, but um, certainly appreciate that you've come in. Um, you know, the materials that you suggested are perfectly appropriate, I think, and um, you did a great job on the front, so we're expecting the same. I, I did close a couple of elevation shots. Yep. Yep. Got it. Yeah, I yep. it there. I apologize. Well, no, I'm not seeing that. He's whispering. <laughs> 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 I said, I'm just going to. 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 I'm just going
Does anyone else have any other questions for the applicant? There it is. So you've got a that will walk on the top of it. I don't know. I was going to say, what? No. For the record, no. <laughs> Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Yes, ma'am. Same thing as the park for neighbors and uh, it's on the front porch. So the condition is slightly disturbed. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you for coming in. Hearing none, we'll move on to anything further. We'll move on to 7054, the application at 15 foot path.
Um, I think my wife, Sean, would pick, have a second career. Um, she uh, did some drawings on Gary Vivian's as well as the existing plans of the house. Um, our architect was not aware that we had to make a submission for this original. So that's why we had to kind of take matters into our own hands. Thanks to Sandra. Um, so if you look at it again, the porch um, that extends out from the main structure is already existing. We're just replacing windows. Um, we are uh, putting uh, atrium, excuse me, atrium French doors in the middle of the structure, and we're replacing an existing casement window with a new one. And then there's one more view, I think, uh, that you just held up. All right, go down. Maybe, really. Maybe it was the first view. Yeah, that's the left hand side of the house. Correct. Yeah. There you go. So, looking from the street, left side, west, where the sun sets. Um, the only, initially, um, the thought, again, I don't know if this is pertinent, but the initial thought, there's going to be a kitchen inside there. So, we were thinking of doing something different. And we didn't feel um, that it was necessary. Then we learned that it's, it's visible on the street. So with the stove, we were thinking about doing something narrow. We don't think that would look appropriate. And with the stove going there, we decided to take the window off. And it will be clapboarded over to that house. So that's the extent of the project. Um, again, apologies, our first understanding was that we didn't need to speak um, for the rear of the house. Right. Any, any questions? Anything? Nope, I'm pretty clear on it. Thank you. That's it for now, right? We got a whole bunch of details <laughs> we'd like help on, but <laughs> all right, well thank you. Uh, anyone from the public would like to speak for or against this application? All right. We'll move on to Peggy Cummings. Thank so we'll move on to application 7056, the application for 29 Woodland. Anyone? 29 Woodland? Oh, yeah. Hello. Welcome. Name and address for record, please. So you have provided us with the necessary plot plan and yep. the um, specs for the fence and the cut sheet for the fence. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, do, you, do you have any, any, anything <laughs> else? We really don't. I think we have everything we yep. need on yours. OK. Um, does anyone have any other questions? You, you showed us where your gates are and everything. Yep. So I think we're good to go. And we're familiar with the product. <coughs> anything last thing? Chris Hall? I'm clear. Okay. Hearing none, thanks very much for coming in. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to our final application 7057, the application for 57 Middletown Ave. Go carry 57 Middletown Ave. Welcome. So what do you have for us tonight? Uh, the pictures there. I'm trying to modify the windows to make everybody happy, trying to make it look like they're single panes by putting something on the outside of the windows there. I did one window complete there to make everybody happy. Double side tape. It's a uh, PVC on the outside. If you look at the pictures there, it's just, I, I, I saw the picture on that piece. I saw the ones on the computer. Yep. And much better. Okay. Uh, my one concern is the durability of this as well. Oh, they're, they're on there. I mean, they're, I put it on there and went on a couple of days later. I had to take a chisel or a, okay. or a pudding knife to get up and okay. to get them out. 
stuff is uh, really adhesive. We have double sided tape there. It's the same stuff that you got cars and body work and stuff like that, but it's ultra thin, so it doesn't stick it off the windows. That was, um, this is much improved okay. from a side by. And the original windows are gone. Yeah, those are gone. Three, four years ago. Thank you very Thank much. You. Any other questions? Thank you. Any members of the public wish to speak in favor or against this application? If not, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing and remit to the public meeting. I'll second. All in favor, aye. 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 At the beginning, application 7036, the application for 111 Garden. I will make a motion to approve as submitted with the following stipulations that the double plug windows shall be more than elevate with light bulbs of 671. Windows, the double hung windows shall be margin elevate with white pattern 6601 and there be no couple blocking. Do you have a couple additions to that? Do you want to talk about yours first or do you want to hear about the additions and add them to your uh, <coughs> I would like to see if it's stipulated that there be no bridge cap on the metal. It seems that that can. It's not that familiar with the product, so it's, it's hard for me to say yay or nay. What else? Uh, the other concern I had was the larger size of the windows on the front. Uh, granted, it's a heat rest issue that was brought up, but that, that could be solved very easily by the windows on the side. That's a problem. So your stiff is maintain size of windows on the facade or front on the facade. Front facade yeah. I, I agree with that. And I asked that question because they are quite large relative to the original. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that great picture, well, we should finish sitting and talk about that. And then all the other items, um, I think that'll, okay. So those are your like, four steps. I'll second. So. Was there anything else? Or? No, so I, at the outset, I think because what they submitted today included a smooth hardy plank, flat exposure, casement windows on the left east side porch room, the door, um, eliminate the side lights on the front door and reduce the transom light above to four lights. And the, found, the foundation under the porch, we're calling it room, and then the West side porch is a poured foundation with blue stone topping and no railings on the front porch. All of those things were part of the application tonight, so I don't they, think we they, need to they skip were for sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think when you look at this picture, it's great because you do see the original old house, which yep. is really seems to have been used. But when you notice that it's front like this, they just go big, and, and I miss the six over one. So I, I like that we're going smaller on the front, and I, I do feel like we need to be more. And I think Fox is right. I don't uh, you might there has been an added window on the west side. I don't have a picture of the yeah. right. So the egress in that room should be solved by that. I think it um is important to preserve the facade. Uh, even though we're adding that little porch area, but preserving the front of that house is going to be important to preserving the overall look of the house with the other kind of dramatic changes that are being permitted. Um, I certainly agree with the no covered walkway. Um, I can live with either way. Um, I think the impact on the district for that covered walkway is absolutely critical. The narrow lots, the sight lines are very limited. They are now, but those bushes, yeah, they they, yeah. and then, it, then it's wide open because there's big space in between after that. Okay. 
very well, very yeah. big salt mine. But that, right. that's my concern as well. But I, I love metal roofs, um, but you'll see what this application is like if it's only in a small area, as opposed to a bigger, like I, the fact that it's not metal here, it's just over the porch, and then you kind of have that transition, it's helped by the fact that it's in the back, yep. so you're not seeing stuff. Right. So I can speak to that <coughs> from personal experience. The house I'm living in, it's a small metal roof on the front porch. There's a sort of matching back porch, and one story part that is asphalt channels. Because of low pitch roof, it's not really noticeable. Yeah. I like that. We did allow it on Broad Street on the porch. Mm -hmm. on the, oh, yeah. Right. And, and I think it looks great. Oh, right. yeah. A metal roof on porch is entirely appropriate. Yeah, I think it looks great. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm in my travels lately. I see them on the porch and the house on original houses, even they've lasted that long. And they look totally appropriate for that style house, whether it's whatever district it's in. It seems to be something I've seen and original. Everything else is covered in the yes. and that's 
only thing that the only thing I had that was so your 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 one stipulation is that there should be no condensers uh, as they are proposed at the moment. Yes, we are. Uh, I second. Um, you know, I think that uh, the applicant has listened to neighbors and to the commission conversation and has come back with a, a, a redesigned complete, if you will application that seems to, to the neighbors concerns but still meets what they want to achieve. Um, I don't have a problem with the parking lot. Uh, it is very far back from the screen uh, with the hedge and uh, with the fencing on the back side. Um, the lighting is maybe driven coming down. Or I think I should say work down the street to turn the lock to the one concern I have is Given the choice between fake and none, it's none. You know, the chimney is very visible on this. Um, I actually would rather have a fake. I, I agree, but it's more effectively at the uh, salon. Uh, and that's also a fake option. Um, I, I like how they step down the addition. Um, I, I love the landscaping. That lot is bigger. And you see it from the certainly from the main street. One thing that I think we're going to hear a fair amount of lack about is the project theory. Well, that it's a huge addition, that it's not a residential building anymore, it's a commercial building. But I think that that is a decision that the town made in establishing the village. I agree. This is adapted. This is I, I think some of the massive issues, especially when you, when you look at Main Street Kramer, that building on forever. Um, yeah, there are some similar maps. This is a good size addition, there's no doubt in whether it's 71 feet or 50 feet chain. It's, it's, it's a rebuildable 70 chain, 69. 70. And, and I agree with this in the way, you know, as we've discussed, there, there are sections of, of Main Street where this would not be appropriate. Um, and I actually think a bigger lot and wider sight lines you would get it like it would, would be mm -hmm. have much more of an impact. No, but it doesn't matter anyway. You guys got the majority. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, the application is approved with the stipulation. Congratulations. Application 7038, the application for 355 Middletown Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve and submit it with the following stipulations that my pattern is 606. Oh, second. Uh, you want to stick the color to? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, right. they, they change. The, the right. left one so is the same. Oh, that's 
So that's a guy talking. <laughs> So uh, I'll second it. I think um, I actually agree with the six over six just because yeah. it's more closely aligned with what was probably there originally. Yeah. Once they're going to look at Any other comment, Chris? Question? Yes, Connor. Um, you say SEO. Uh, or their SEO. So oh, you just right. said SEO with the uh, Facebook. Okay. I think they did mention that. Yes. Right. Cool. But if you're sticking it's around, yes, sorry. add that to the skip and I'll check it. Um, any other questions? No? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. One opposed? Nay. No. Three. Two, two opposed. Two. Uh, with three ayes. Yeah. The motion sure. carries and the application is approved with the stipulation. Application 7045, the application for 538 Main Street. 358. Three, no, 508. I'm, I'm the one stuck here. <laughs> 538 Main Street. I'm like, I'm looking at the text. And I wrote it wrong. I make a motion to ignore. I will second. Um, so I think, you know, the biggest argument to changing them was that they weren't properly installed, and he's done all the base work yeah. underneath it, which we saw before this application came in, if we were driving by, and the brownstone is out in the backyard, and now properly placed back in with the right base, I think, is uh, a better option than the granite that he's got out there right now. I, I walked the state down to the water. And walked it to be able to look carefully. And um, certainly there were wood steps on some of the newer homes. They were in Bellington. Uh, but every other set of steps was brownstone. And yes, there may be foundations, but then it just still be the same. Yeah, I, I don't think they were modern. I think they were just well done a long time ago. <laughs> Um, brownstone is certainly more appropriate. It's probably came from the local Holton quarries at some point, and granite is more up north, so I would imagine it's how it would have been done a long time ago. Um, the stones that are there now, to me, almost look more like a hazard. I wouldn't want to step on those stones. They, they look like they look like old foundation stones that were used as steps, even though they're they're rough cut for for, for that look. That rough cut to me, to me, looks like a little tricky. But um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say on that. But the thing is, what it should come down to is not whether it's a hazard, that's the building department's problem, but whether or not a granite step is appropriate for this building. Yeah, I don't think for the other reasons. I, you know. If, if the brownstone is done right, it should be just put back, you know. Should be. Uh, given that, though, I think that, you know, the granite foundation, they brought that granite in probably from Glastonbury. Like, I know they were mining it somewhere there many years ago. Um, somehow they got it past there across the river, uh, especially in light of the foundation used in that house, and some of the surrounding other foundations like the warehouses. So I don't, I don't think it is inappropriate. Uh, and we did get a cease and desist, so we don't really know how he's going to lay that granite. But uh, I would imagine that the brownstone, especially once it lands in the front door, probably will not cut down carefully. So I don't, I mean, not our issue, but they're probably not in the best of shape. But we did see the pile there in the far corner of the house. Well, I mean, another so, option brownstone facade, which uh, yeah, Cedar Hill has. I was talking to Dennis Walters and I thought that not this brownstone case. Any other comments? All those in favor of the deny, just say aye. Aye. Chris said aye. Opposed? Opposed. 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 Opposed.
7051, the application at 38 Center Street was withdrawn. Application 705214 Willard. They were, um, they were not here today. Is that what just walked in? No. Um, um, take a motion to table. I'll move to table the application 70522. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Application 7053 349 Main Street. Approval submitted. A second. Uh, what was what is proposed is an entirely appropriate replacement for the existing porch. It's going to be as minimal as sight lines from the street, which is really too bad because it's going to be a great porch. <laughs> Agreed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Application is approved and submitted. Application 7054, the application for 15 foot pass. Make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. The windows are going to be basically not visible at all from any sight line at, on any street. Agreed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carrying none. The application is approved and submitted. Chris is opposed? No, no. He said okay. aye. Application 7055, the application for 15 Robinswood. I am uh, abstained. Second. The window being removed is a symmetry to these houses. I was going to mess with that symmetry. Would it be worth, do you think, to trim it? Just the trim and the window. Use the trim and basically fill in the clockwork in the middle, which sort of sort of tells the viewer that there was a window there. I'm glad you brought that up. As opposed to somebody simply made a mistake. I think the way the house so the symmetry is talking about is going to be in that not much to the right side of the house from that front door. Symmetry is kind of off a little bit already. Loss of that window. I understand what you're saying. Well, too, yeah. It's minimal to you. Uh, yeah, so direction, but yeah, it kind of almost gives that that everything. Yeah. I agree. I understand what you're saying, but I, I think it all is also kind of a different symmetry to begin with. That this would be not. Yeah, because yeah. from the front is three bay house. Yeah. You know, with the doors at the center on the side, it's still a three bay house. Yeah. And it's yeah. Two, two windows deep. I, I, I know what he means. I see I see a lot of houses like that where a long time ago they, they just filled in the window. Um, and I, I don't know if they kept it to save money. <laughs> no, it's a kid. We've had many homes at the district that we you know, leave a lot from removal, even though it's interior, it's for kitchen rehab, refurbishment. So. Yeah. That's where you, yeah, that would be my okay with that. All those in favor of approval as submitted say aye. Aye. Chris is an aye. Oh. Opposed? Uh, I'll go on. Aye. The application is approved and submitted. Application 7056, the application for 29 Woodland. Make a motion to approve the fence. The application is submitted. I'll second. They came in with an entirely appropriate metal fence that will blend very nicely into the area. Agreed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, carrying on the application is approved and submitted. Application 7057, 57 Milltown Avenue. I have a motion to approve is submitted, the, to approve the amendment is submitted. I'll second. Uh, Yes, um, it's a uh, solution to a problem, but definitely not one we want to see again. And um, it, it, it encourages just doing it right coming in. It's a, it, I think it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to recreate what was there at this point. But um, you know, this is a, a solution. That gets us 
closer to where it should be. With the um, knowledge that it, it's something that does not set a precedent for future portion uh, remodel windows. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, three to two. The application is approved as amendment. Chris. No, I was. I approved. I said I. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were late. Thank you. No, my hand was coming out of frame when you went over there. <laughs> it's a Zoom lag. That's okay. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Approval of minutes of April 12. Uh, I'll second with equal comments. Thank you. Thank you for your assistance, Tim and Linda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oops, hearing none, the minutes are approved. Other business, public comments on general matters for the historic district. Yeah. All right, Michael, let's go. Yeah, time, right? All the essence and all that. And all that. Hello. Welcome back. Good to see people in person. It is. My first time here. All right, so we didn't know you were coming in. Hopefully, whatever you have is going to be quick. I can be super quick. It's up to you. I mean, like, the, I just wanted you guys to see the next iteration for both. And I just gave a copy to my neighbor, Paul. So I'll take his advice, but he wants obviously feedback from the commission as well. So this is just two different elevations, uh, just as a start, because spending too much time on any details at this point would be a waste of resources. So look at that. Come on for everyone to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if there's there are some commissioners online, right? One. One. Well, I have to say, having spent five days with your husband doing the performance board, I saw a lot of stories. I saw stories I'll have to show you all that look like the good ones. So, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, I guess it's a, oh, thank you, have this, I'm glad. This is just another point. It's just a for discussion, mainly, but I, it's really the vision of Chris, did we lose you? The Zoom meeting is on. Uh, uh, yeah. Can you play it by a comment? I mean, well, I, think I mean, this is right informal anyway. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that was so, kind of my fault. So. so you've got three days and you dropped the height. I dropped the height by 11 and a half. And you have a shivers. And it's um, set far back. It's set on the same footprint. The footprint is non-negotiable in theory, as it is a deeded uh, footprint from a prior approval, and that's why I'm using it. I wasn't trying to uh, invent the wheel. I just wanted to take what was previously approved. It's deeded. It's not deeded. It's deeded no. to from a site plan perspective. Deeded. Correct. Not for us. Yeah. No, it's not aesthetically. No, you guys can say no to anything for any reason. Yeah, you guys have carte blanche. But you, you have the ability to put it on. You just said we don't like the footprint. You need to move it. Correct. Okay. I, well, I can't. But, but, <laughs> but I can't move it, is what I'm saying. Because it's deep. <laughs> I literally can't. Well, you would have, I imagine you would have to apply for something else. It's yeah, not, I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Not yeah, that's in not stone. me. It's not engraved in stone. But, oh. um, you know, we. Yeah. From my from my perspective of creativity, I wasn't about to come up with anything other than what was previously done because I don't Understood. frankly what else have got? a better opinion. Uh, so what we did just briefly for the aesthetic uh, comments that we heard was a the height, um, you know, scaling. Uh, obviously, we wanted to show you what the siding is. This is not per se the color; it is as same as before. It would be painted the stained black, um, like tummy groove. Vertical, vertical side, vertical, yep, side. vertical yep. barn board essentially, but pre painted black just so that we don't stain black, I should say, so we don't have to wait for it to age. It just it matches better with the building that way. Um, you can see on the on the 
original brick building, there's they put in like a little bit of a detail with a, that horizontal line of brick. So we ran it across and it worked out to be able to be used as sort of like a, a header for the garage uh, lights. So we thought that was pretty cool. Well, um, that, that does a good job breaking up that facade. A whole, yeah. And if you see on the second page, obviously, is the other elevation, the west elevation. So you can see how it does so over there. Not that you would line yourself to be that precise. <laughs> well, and you'd have to be inside Paul's kitchen, probably. Yeah, you'd have to be 14 feet up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, are these awning type windows in the front here? Are they going to swing out? Uh, windows or doors? Well, let's start with the windows. The windows, uh, I they don't even need to open. I wasn't I was wondering. I'm just yeah. Asking. I was just going to have it as be a way to get some light in and not have to break the doors up with that light. So does the mantle and lights match the mantle or and lights on the building? Yeah, so the so here's the one thing that we did do is, um, and I'm sorry to be pointing, but the, the light above the existing door, it is a four-sided lantern. And so I, I picked, A, it's not repairable, it's trash. It was cheap when it was bought and it's super tiny. And so we thought that making them all the same size or much closer to the same size would be more appropriate. And uh, the lanterns that I found, um, I have examples I can send you about four or five, but there's only about four or five that fit the scale um, that are not 1200 bucks a piece. They're still 300 bucks a piece, but so they're, yeah. not gas they're not actual gas. <laughs> no. But if you like, that might be cheaper. Yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> I'm going to be using a lot of gas there anyway. The man doors will be uh, identical. I mean, we're going to have to build the one custom, but we should be able to. We're going to yeah make that the same. Uh, there were one thing is I mean, and I'm leaving this to Paul. I mean, he's got. I'm sure he'll have some comments. But um, on the west elevation, that faces his house, and the reason it was specifically mentioned that there were some folks on the commission that thought we should break it up with windows, doors, what have you. And I don't see a good solution because any window or door would shed light on Paul's property. And I don't think there's any reason to do that unless he wants it. And so I don't believe that's the case, but he can, I'm willing to listen to anything you got there. I think a lot of the comments that were made at the time, at least there's a taller view, building. Because at this point, the building reads as wider than it does small. Yeah, considerably uh, wider than it is tall now. Yeah, right. right. Before it wasn't. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So, and I think most of the time buildings tend to be wider than our they are tall unless you're in New York City. Yeah, land's not established for any of the gold letters. Uh, so I think the concerns about breaking up a huge extent of wall is not even gone. Things have signed. Yeah. But like, are you saying there's 41 feet to the left side of the building? To uh, here fence. is, uh, I, I believe, would, would be best for this. Here's the site plan. Um, read this out. Uh, site. Paul, oh, I don't know if you want to see this as well, but I just, not every day you get your neighbor in here and get to give feedback and get feedback. But, right, so this is the footprint that the Tapshes had. Um, so we put the same footprint on there. They had an elevator that went up inside of this space, right. and we are not building an elevator. So the 41, Unless anybody's got a good line and so a cheap the, one. <laughs> so the 41 feet, three inches, is from here to here. So oh. the 41 three is from the curb to something. Oh, I, Where, I think. The, where the question was driven right. is two slab 41 degrees. Ah, from the street to the front edge. Yes, okay. so that's, uh, what's it called? The set, lot set that high. Oh, so oh, this oh, one's 15 and a half, and this this one's the 41. Okay. Okay. This actually, this is 20 something, because oh, the exactly. property line is at an angle as well. Right. Now you're saying slab here, is that where your dumpsters are going? Or where well, this, oh, the dumpster, uh, an interim dumpster location was the same, it was right here, it's the same spot with a, the same custom fence around it that we brought that, I think the first time I came. And it's the same shadow box fence. Uh, and basically, I, as I, I'm happy to do whatever it takes 
for the short term on that. I really don't want to have the dumpster there for long. So it's only in here somewhere? I'm, I'm oh, sorry. I'm or in, or like inside the building. Well, this isn't going to be built right away. It's just for my site plan, which is a five year plan. So year one, two, three, no garage. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, who knows? Maybe I do very well, well and there's a garage in year two, but I don't expect it. Okay. <laughs> so we're looking at this five years on the road, you're saying? Um, quite possibly, but I don't want something on here on the drawing that's going to offend anybody today and make the town go, like, what are these guys thinking? So, in the sense that I've come across public. Uh, comment on things as little as not drawing a tree in a drawing, I, uh, and that had nothing to do with my interest in the tree. It was just out of okay. scope. So this is why, yeah. So it's all included. Chris is back. You know. Hi, Chris. Now we're doing this. I didn't go anywhere. I, yeah, I've been watching the whole time. Wow. Wow. They hung up on you. Yeah. yeah. We couldn't see. No, I, the whole time I've been watching and listening. I I didn't notice any difference here, but we're good. Oh, that's the bar top. Okay, but they're multiple. Yeah, they're they're just spread out because we're sanding the tops. Of they're not permanent. Uh, there's six. Yeah. They're tables. No, they're my bar top. I gotta cut them down. So uh, that tree was, if you guys know, that was 220 Maple Street, right up the road from my house. Mm -hmm. And two years ago, now we had a spring or storm of some sort that there were microbursts and stuff, and this tree was sitting on there, and I was like, early COVID, knocking on the, hello? And uh, she let me take the tree. So I sliced it up to make the bar top because that's exactly what I want. It was a perfect piece of wood. Um, it won't be natural edge, it'll be cut down. It's just that I have had, I've been drawing that wood for two years at Rocky Hill, and so now it's time to acclimate it to the building, do a final drawing, and then start to figure out which side's the best. So that's all I'm doing now. I now know which side to the top. Let me show you which ones are going there. I hope you want to steal my, my, my <laughs> slabs? <laughs> so I built a table okay. out of similar at my house okay. that I'll be moving, well, maybe moving to the brewery because it's too heavy and it can only fit upstairs. So I'm not opening upstairs for a while. Um, okay. It's 12 feet by there four. So what's your one year time for that? Honestly, I would love to be permitting that in a year, if I'm really honest, but I don't, I can't, I, I, it's a lot of money, yeah. <laughs> and everything I've been doing keeps getting more expensive, so it's hard for me to, at this stage, say like, oh, heck yeah. Um, so I'm not going to be drinking your beer at a lunch Oh, I think you, well, well, depends on who you know at the town, is what I keep <laughs> telling people. Out of this location. Uh, <laughs> No, no, I mean, out of this location, it's not a lot of work to be done. I've done all the structural work at the building. Oh, okay. So it is, it's been recertified as a assembly use level building right. on both floors. Uh, so all, and I'm, I'm started sanding the floors a little bit and started, uh, the walls are prepped for sealing them up. So it's then a matter of building a bar and finishing the bathrooms and right. electric and HVAC. <laughs> Just those yeah, little things. Um, but wait, I want to, there's a key thing on this for you to also okay. check out because it's going to come up when I do come for my official. Is you see this uh, west facing door? Yeah. Um, that, that's, that is a new door yeah. in replace of a window that was there, and that's for functional exit. Um, I'm certainly, again, you see it mirrors the other doors. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. And it has a lantern, albeit a smaller one. It'll be a, the same style, just not the 26-inch edition. Um, and so I think. And actually, you told us about the stairs earlier. So I, I did, and I just, but the whole thing, I guess there was somebody at the town who was supposed to tell me if whether that was already included in a prior thing. And I, that was with Gillespie, and I, I still never got an answer. So I don't, I really don't know. But I just keep showing it to people because I don't want to. Things get lost in translation. Things get lost in PDF files also. Yeah. Uh, I think one other little one other thing was what you had up on the screen before, oh, and, yeah. and I can be super brief on that. It's just the concept for my patio has always been, and I should say the concept for my brewery in general has been driven from a brewery that I absolutely adore in Amsterdam, and 
it's uh, one of two windmills in the city. So obviously it's already pretty special, the fact that they built the brewery in the building, the, the windmill keeper's home. So don't get me wrong, now it's sold with a billion dollar company, but the way they do their trees and their umbrellas, that's the way I want my patio. If, if I have my druthers, uh, I would also have the same level of bike traffic as they do, but that's Amsterdam and I won't get to control that. Yeah, and so I just, I want to, yeah, pollard up some, um, I, they're essentially um, lindens and uh, it, in the summer, you have various seasons shown and various levels of maturity, but I've personally been to that brewery, I think four times over the course of six or so years and every year it looks better. That's a brand new expansion at the time of the photo. So you can see the trees were not quite fully developed yet, but so it takes a little time and there'll be cables kind of running from the trees to keep the branches where I want them. And the very same trees are what hold my, my string lights, which are what will light the patio. Is that so, where you got the idea for the pigeon on the building too? Or? Not at all. Uh, the pigeon came from an amazing designer out of Hartford uh, named Richard Holland. And he's yeah. just the man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually, I don't know if he came up, but probably one of his staff did. But, and, they're, and they are all the women, because <laughs> he's the only man there, so I should give them the credit. Um, he, uh, yeah, he did. They did a great job. So I think those are the key things. Was that quick enough? Yeah. Thank you much. Now here's one other question for you before you go online. There is currently discussion at zoning about the two trees in front of the building and the location of my handicap parking. I implicitly proposed to put three spaces on Main Street where there are currently, excuse me, two handicap spaces on Main Street where there are currently three standard spaces and that's to have them repainted. Um, I have all previously offered to add additional spaces to Church Street um, near the stop sign if that is, if they need me to replace those spaces. It sounds like they need me to, but everyone and their cousin is trying to add spaces in front of those trees on Main Street, the beach and the um, Sycamore. Sycamore, thank you. And it has been stated by the tree warden and others that by putting parking there, it will make the tree non viable. Um, I told them I will not under any circumstances be party to that. But I think it should be important that folks in the historic district such as yourselves who deal with the aesthetics, maybe pass on judgments to other departments that trees are an asset in the village because cutting them they down, are. because they are. <laughs> and well, so I have to say, I don't always think they're an asset. I mean, I just live by the trees. Yeah. Just things are overgrown and inappropriate. But sycamore, they're just huge. So, yeah. It's a pillow. I, I, I just, it, I think it's important. Um, it's an important part of the village, and everyone obviously has their opinion. I'm not very about the beach, but I love that. Yeah. Yeah. The beach is, I see more people getting pictures in front of the beach, although I think the trunk of the sycamore is better, it's and I don't understand that. I think the trunk looks like trunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all just for people uh, yeah, uh, causing stir. What about the one they just cut down? The giant one that got hit by lightning. I mean, that breaks my heart. I would have used that to make so many tables. <laughs> I watched the guy up there. Holy I, I, if I had known, I, I, had a, I had a, if I had known, I would have been down there and saying, I would, have, I would have tied myself to that thing to make table. I would have. Just <laughs> I know. Not, it was so you're getting not like how high you were. Not like a special. Not to draw this out, but you had talked earlier about making that the cut to the sidewalk cut to those three that kind of in front of the bell in there. But are you saying that? I don't want to add any additional spaces in front of right. So your proposal is to grab those closest, to the three closest, and, and, and you're getting pushed back that that's not appropriate that they want. Um, the preference more. from engineering is to cut the trees down and make me put nine spaces there. Because they get because we just as you know what's going on down farther down the street. They're, they're adding spaces. Yes, that's come up since I've been trying to tell them they need to uh, change the angle on the spaces, and apparently it's been heard. 
I've been honestly, I can't tell you how much I've been arguing with these things over parking and a public area. Um, yeah, we do a lot of weird things, and I I shared all the I I read all the different studies we've commissioned over the years. There's a lot of great information in there as to how we so can this our a garage. Garage edition or the roof on the piece. You work, you're going to have how many spaces there? This, if this is five years down the road. So to start with, it's it's a, a part a pad, if you will, for six cars. With the garage, I can't get handicapped. I, I, said, I will not have a handicap at the rear because then right. somebody goes to the back door, and I don't, that's not the no, it, it, correct. correct. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be so that in the front, the back, with that elevator. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that that's, uh, I mean, I think to me that's a, the best solution. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's why they'll let the museum change their architecture. Yeah, actually, Rich, their consultant that they just hired is the guy that did my logo. That was, oh. so the guy who's helping to relaunch their thing, it was the same company. He mostly works with not-for-profits, but I met him oh. ages ago, and we just have a, we have a best relationship. He's still on. I'm a not-for-profit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I've been open in business for five years. So you, you must know about my books. I paid money for your hair before, so. <laughs> now is this a, I, I leave, is that how it works? Well, I mean. Unless you go. That's it? Is this, we're done, you're done. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no well, Hopefully you don't have to stay here for anything you. else. Um, there's no application, so you're yeah. just letting us know. So I can come back next time and with an application and there's hopefully well, less like So keep this in mind. If you get approval from us, it's good for one year. Understood. If you're if you're going five years down the road, this aspect is it's the site plan is my main concern. Oh. Um, That's still the store yes. yes. There and are. You can get an extension. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I'm not terrible. I'm just I know I have to do it for five years on the zoning side, so I was like, I might as well throw it on there because I saw that it was needed, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, uh, I was just gonna, there was one other aspect right now. It's in my brain, but uh, it's I didn't need to be that clever. Yeah. Do we have any correspondence? No. Uh, and no report. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll say aye. 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 Chris says bye. Thank you, aye, Chris. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you tuning in. Do you guys need a physical copy? Well, if you guys had no comments, it's not going to change. Because I don't pay my guy any extra for nothing. Because <laughs> I'm not paying.